I wonder what gratitude means to you. At the basic level, it's about being thankful. Now, sometimes that comes out in our words, in our actions, in payment, in reciprocation. But why is it important? Why is it good for us not only to be thanked for the things we do and the people we are, but to be thankful for what and who are around us as well? Well, we're going to start with a test, a scientifically created proper test to find out how grateful you are. For every question, I want you to rank yourself on the scale of one to seven, with one being strongly disagree to the statement and seven being strongly agree. And add up your total score as you go along. And by the end, you should have a score out of 42. Ready? Here we go. How would you answer this question? I have so much in life to be thankful for. Remember, one is strongly disagree, four is neither agree nor disagree, and seven is strongly agree. So you've got that number? Next question. If I had to list everything I felt grateful for, it would be a very long list. Again, score yourself one to seven, add that to the score that you already had. Number three. When I look at the world, I don't see much to be grateful for. Again, do you agree? Do you disagree? If you agree with it, that's the highest score. If you disagree, that's the lowest. And keep adding your score as we go along. It's about this question. I am grateful to a wide variety of people. Do you agree? Do you disagree? Where do you fit on the scale? Keep adding your scores together. Next one, as I get older, I find myself more able to appreciate the people, events and situations that have been part of my life history. Got your score for that one, added it onto the ones from before. Let's keep going. This statement, long amounts of time can go by before I feel grateful to something or someone. One, again, is still strongly disagree. Four is neither agree nor disagree. And seven is strongly agree with all the numbers in between. Have you got your total? Well, see, the higher you score, the more grateful you are. Being honest, did any of you even get close to 42? If I'm being honest, I think and my maths isn't great at that speed, I think I got about 30, which means I've got plenty of room for improvement. And I guess I should be thankful for that. But basically, the higher you score, the more grateful you are. And the more grateful you are, the more benefits you'll reap. And that's, that's scientific fact. And we'll look at some of those benefits in a moment. But one of the questions in the test was, what are you thankful for? If you were to write a list, what would make your list of things to be thankful for? So let's be real. Some days are hard. So I made this list of awesome things I'm thankful for. Yeah. Sometimes I need reminding that things are not all that bad. So I wanted to share a few because you guys are my friends. It's great to be alive. And here's some reminders why. First one, bubble wrap. When cats do their tongue like this. I'm also thankful for the little paw pads that the cats and dogs have and the sound it makes. Paw pads. I love them. Hey, turn that back on. Oh, no, 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 no. Change it, change it. Ah, there, that's better. Music is magical. It can make anything better. Try music can make a video better. The same goes with life. Singing. I like paw pads. I like paw pads. Singing. If something's boring, just sing it, and that will make it better. Watching paint dry. It's really cool. Old people who still hold hands. Clouds that look like stuff. One time I saw a cloud that looked like an airplane, and I realized it was an airplane. <laughs> Imagination. Without it, we wouldn't have airplanes, no internet. Pants. Pants. Pants, we gotta wear them, because if we didn't, it'd be sort of awkward. Pants. Fresh Prince of Bel-Air. <laughs> Sleep. Clothes with funny names, like Windbreaker. <laughs> Birthday cake. No reason at all cake, just cake. Sorry if we filmed this while I was hungry. 
forgiveness. I'm kidding, President, but I ain't perfect. Ain't, ain't no word. We all mess up. Come on. Don't mess up and forget to forgive all the mess ups. Thankful plants undergo photosynthesis, using the energy from the sun to convert carbon dioxide to oxygen, providing us with the air we need to do things like this. I'm bored. <laughs> Morgan Freeman's voice. Hello, I'm Morgan Freeman. I'm working on it. My voice is changing, but it hasn't changed that much. Food. Doggo. Burger. <laughs> I know, I know, I already said food, but this is my list and my rules. Happiness. Sadness. Sad isn't bad. It helps you know what you care about. People. Sometimes people can be really people, but we need each other. Life's better with people in it. Family, friends, you. Just being alive. Sometimes we forget how it's just great to be alive. We're breathing. Some days are tough, but we got a lot to be thankful for. We just have to look for it sometimes. They say if you have food in your fridge, clothes on your back, and a place to sleep, you're richer than 75% of the world. I did not know that. So what would you add to the list? Let me know. Share this video with someone you're really thankful for. Oh, and of course, also this. Dancing! As a kid president, he had a long list. But I said there was some science. I said there was some scientific facts, scientific proofs for the argument that we should perhaps be more grateful. Well, according to PositivePsychology.com, who did all the hard work and pulled together and collated and simplified a whole list of studies that I didn't have time to read through thoroughly, here's what they found out. They found that the benefits of gratitude can be split into five sections, with a sixth kind of other section thrown in at the end. So the first section was the emotional benefits. That actually, being grateful makes us happier. It increases our psychological well-being. It enhances our positive emotions. It increases our self-esteem and it keeps suicidal thoughts at bay. On the social aspect, it makes people like us. It improves our romantic relationships. It improves our friendships. It increases our social support and it strengthens family relationships in times of stress. On a personality level, if we're more grateful, we become more optimistic. We have an increased spirituality. We're more generous with what we have and we're less concerned about getting stuff. And we have this enhanced optimism. We see things uh, in a more positive light. Not just on this personal, social uh, level, but on a career level. If we make it into the workplace, if, if we become managers, we're more effective managers. We reduce our impatience and, and our decision making becomes better. We find meaning in the work that we do. Uh, we re have a reduced turnover of stuff. People want to work with us and for us uh, and it creates a better place to work. And there's this improved mental health and reduced stress. And then on a health level, again, kind of similar to those last ones in the career level, we reduce our depressive symptoms. We're less likely to become depressed. We have reduced blood pressure, which is good for all of our cardiovascular systems. We, we get in better sleep. We have an improved sleep and we have an increased motivation for exercise, which in turn improves our overall physical health. On top of that, there's all sorts of reasons where, and scientific proofs where gratitude has shown to help recovery from things like depression, from things like addictions, to aid us and to help us have a better life. So the question is, where does Christianity come into this? Because I only get invited to talk about Christianity, don't I? Well, actually, in the Bible, Psalm 100 verses 4 to 5 says this. Enter his gates with thanksgiving and his courts with praise. Give thanks to him and praise his name for the Lord is good and his love endures forever. His faithfulness continues through all generations. The psalmist is saying, come to the place where you can meet God and bring a list of things to be thankful for. But what if... What if that religious experience, what if coming before God isn't just to inflate his ego, isn't just to make him feel good, but what if what the psalmist is saying is that it brings out things in us? 
What if there's something in what the psalmist is saying that preempts our recent scientific understanding? And actually, from my perspective, it wouldn't be the first time that the Bible has said something that was proven a lot, lot, lot later by science. What if the coming together in gratitude is actually partially to show us that we as society, we as individuals, can benefit our emotions, our social interactions, our personalities, our careers, our health, just by being grateful? And what if God is saying, actually, this is a chance for you to do that by expressing your gratitude to me. God becomes a shared focus of thanks for all that we encounter, the big and the small. Soul Pancake, off of, off of the YouTube, they ran a series looking at the science of happiness and the things that affect the state of our happiness, the things that make us happier. And they did all sorts of really interesting uh, experiments. It's worth, worth looking up. One of them was that they got people uh, to take a happiness test and then they got them to think about somebody that they were thankful for. And they sat down and, and they were told to write a letter to that person. They were told to write all the things that they were grateful for about that person. And then they said, and here's the twist. Now you're going to phone that person and you're going to read them the letter. And once they'd done that, they gave them the happiness test again. And their happiness levels increased. Like an actual test where you could see that their happiness went up because of their gratitude, because of their willingness and the opportunity to express gratitude. It's another one where they were talking to people who've had things difficult. They gave them a happiness test and then they got them to, to talk about positive things about themselves and positive things about their experiences. And what they found was the happiness levels went up. But there was one uh, participant who stumped the whole test. They gave her a happiness test and she came out as perfect. She had this perfect score higher than anyone had ever seen on these tests. And so they said to her, look, you're an anomaly. How, how are you so happy? How does this work? Here's what she said. Let me uh, let me tell you a little bit about what's going on. Okay. These surveys that we uh, that we gave you, they're designed to uh, measure basically how happy you are. Uh, you scored a, a perfect score, Hap higher than anybody that we've given this test to since we've been doing this. It's 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 really quite remarkable. Good. Uh, I, I think we're all anxious to know why do you think that is. Well. I'll give you a very brief little summary of what I do every morning when I wake up. I wake up and I say, this day I choose to be happy, well, and complete. That's first. I thank God for letting me get up. Then I thank God for the fact that I have running water in a toilet. I have soap. I have toothpaste. There are people in the world who don't have any of those things. And for food because uh, sometimes we get them, well, I don't think I can make it today, I don't think I'm gonna, but we have to realize that we are truly blessed. Then I thank God for peace in my house. I have a peaceful house and I meditate. And then after I meditate and have my prayer, I uh, just say, okay, God, who, how may I serve you today and who can I help today? And finally, I watch cartoons. And when I watch the cartoons, I wait for the answers I just ask. And that's a very happy, beautiful day for me because I don't have any, cartoons never have a problem. There's always an end to it, right? Something good happens at the end. And I have several cartoons that I watch until my day begins. And so therefore, uh, I don't have an attitude. I'm glad to be here. Uh, I think you just told us in two minutes mm -hmm. more than any of the studies we've looked, we've looked over have. So uh, I'd really like to thank you for coming in today and just generally doing fantastic work for helping out the children that you do and for having a fantastic attitude. Uh, thank you so much for coming in, Mama Hill. It's my pleasure. <laughs> you should watch cartoons. I do. Yeah. Oh, good. What's your favorite? Oh, my favorite is Clifford the Red Dog. Clifford the Big Red Dog, adventure time for me. <laughs> you should check it out. It's great. Did you hear it? 
She started the day, yes, with cartoons, that will make everybody happier. But there was something in her gratitude that said she just left her ego at the door. She didn't, didn't bring anything into the day that wasn't gratitude. And that's what impacted her happiness. I wonder, what does gratitude mean to you? Who do you have to be thankful for? Who do you have to be thankful to? What difference would it make to you and to your life, to me and to my life, if I expressed my gratitude a bit more? Let's pray. God, I thank you that there are things in our life to be grateful for, even when there are difficult things that we struggle with. God, I pray you would help us to open our eyes, to see more of the positive things and to be grateful for the blessings that we have. Help us to be aware of them. Help us to list them. Help us to be people who thank others more often. May we all benefit from that as we grow together socially, as our health becomes better, and as we realise what it is to live life to the full through our gratitude and our appreciation to each other and to you. Bless us. Keep us safe. Amen.